before going to understand the first topic that is direct and indirect band gap semiconductor let us revise what we have learned about semiconductors in our previous classes we have seen semiconductor consisting of two bands first one is called as valence band and second one is called as conduction band and the bottom of the conduction band we have represented with ec and similarly the top of the valence band we have represented with ev and there is a separation between bottom of conduction band and top of valence band which we are calling it as energy band gap now if you try to observe clearly the bottom of the conduction band or top of valence band they are actually smooth they are highly flat in this particular diagram this is highly ideal case on the other hand if you see the real situation how this conduction band and valence band it will be like this so this particular red color represent the bottom of the conduction band and this green color represents the top of the valence band they are not actually smooth or flat instead they are having some heights and depths for example in this particular case which is a real situation in materials this is if you try to find out the bottom of the conduction band in this particular case it will be here this is nothing but the bottom of the conduction band similarly if you try to find out the top of the valence band it will be this one this is the lowest point for the conduction band this is the highest point for the valence band now if you see these two are actually represented in ek diagram that means we have taken on y axis energy and x axis we have taken wave vector that is k this is similar to our ek diagram if you remember our ek diagram it will be something like this so it will be something like this but you have seen you but you remember band theory of solids we have seen this is nothing but your energy and this is nothing but your k wave vector the same thing i have shown here with the extended x axis that's it so in this particular case if you see the positions especially if you try to see the position of bottom of conduction band and the position of the bottom of sorry the top of valence band for example this is let us say some k1 and this is some value k2 and if you see there are materials where this k1 is equal to k2 that means the bottom of the conduction band coincides with top of the valence band and there are some materials where the bottom of the conduction band doesn't coincide with top of the valence band so depending upon the position of bottom of conduction band that is this one and top of valence band that is this one we have two different types of semiconductors the first one is the first one is direct band gap semiconductor the first semiconductor is direct band gap semiconductor what do you mean by direct look at this this is nothing but the top point top most point of valence band and this is bottom most point of conduction band they are at same value of k they are having same k value on k axis wave vector axis if you see k1 is equal to k2 that means what actually the bottom of the conduction band is coinciding with the top of valence band the semiconductor for which the top the bottom of the conduction band coincides with top of valence band is known as direct band gap semiconductor 
for these materials the wave vector position that is k position for bottom of conduction band and the wave vector or k position for top of valence band are same that means k1 is equal to k2 as a result of having same momentum at these two positions what we can expect is the corresponding momenta of electrons for example if you see the relation between momentum p and the wave vector k that is h cross k as at these two position electron can have same value of k so it can have same value of momenta too now if you want to transmit electron from valence band to conduction band that means from the top position of valence band to bottom position of conduction band here then electron directly can it can be transferred electron directly can be transferred that means there are no intermediate steps are involved that is the reason why we are calling it as direct banding of semiconductor electron can take direct transition from top of valence band to bottom of conduction band and if you see example for such materials that is gallium arsenide semiconductor and these electrons sorry these semiconductors are used in opto electronic devices such as leds solar cell etc so the basic application of this direct banding of semiconductors are in opto electronic devices now similarly let us go for indirect banding of semiconductor before that we will remove all these things yeah in indirect banding of semiconductor it is clear that the bottom of conduction band that means this one and the top of valence band that is this one they are not at same k point they are not at same k point that means k1 is not equal to k2 this is first observation on ek diagram then it implies that its corresponding momenta are are also not equal that means p1 not equal to p2 that means what electron which is present here bottom of the conduction band and electron which is present in the top of the valence band are having different momenta values that is very very important now if electron wanted to take transition from top of valence band to bottom of conduction band it will not go directly like this instead it will go to some intermediate position or intermediate step it will take some intermediate step from this it will take the transition let me try it clearly that means electron will go first some will take some intermediate stage or intermediate step and then it will go to the bottom of the conduction band that means the transition of electron from top of valence band to bottom of conduction band is taking indirectly that is the reason why this type of semiconductors are known as indirect band gap semiconductors and if you see the examples the well known silicon and germanium semiconductors which we generally use this semiconductors in electronic devices pure electronic devices such as diodes transistors etc so now we have understand what is direct banding of semiconductor what is indirect banding of semiconductor let us put the differences between these two semiconductor in a tabular form the first point we have seen is the definition that is minimum of conduction band coincides with maximum of valence band in case of direct banding of semiconductor whereas it will not coincide 
in indirect band gap semiconductors. On the other hand, in direct band gap semiconductors, we have same K values or same momentum. In indirect band gap semiconductor, we have different K values and hence different momentum values. In direct band gap semiconductor, the transition is direct. The transition will be indirect in case of indirect band gap semiconductors. The applications of direct band gap semiconductors are optoelectronic devices such as LEDs and examples are gallium arsenide. On the other hand here, if you see, this is actually gallium arsenide, this is small s, small s, gallium arsenide, small s. And if you see, the indirect band gap semiconductors are used in pure electronic devices such as diodes, examples are germanium and silicon. These are the basic definitions and understanding of direct and indirect band gap semiconductors.